Hello guys and welcome back to Walk About Minigolf VR. We are going to play the new hard mode in Around the World to find the 17 hidden clues for the new golf club. And also, a big thank you to the Mighty Coconut team for sponsoring me with a code for this course here. The final trip in the Jules Verne universe. So uh, let's see, let's find the hidden things. Alright, so guys, welcome to Eiffel Tower and fireworks. So let's try and see, find the 17 hidden clues. I have the... We're buying a ticket, I guess. We're picking up a compass. Mr. Passepato arrived after a long train ride from London. At the busy aeroport Eiffel also. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing any of these words. I am not... I'm not good at French. No. I don't know French. I know like the average four words. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Uh, he had hoped to serve a peaceful homebody in his later years. But scarcely had the ink right on the contract when he his new master Phileas Fogg told him to pack a carpet bag and accompany him on a grueling tour of the world. Passepartout stopped to rest on a bench below the board of departures and there picked up a stray newspaper. There's a newspaper here but I don't think that's the thing that we need. Oh that was exactly the thing we needed. Around the world in 80 days was his master of all. The French press had heard tell of the English gentleman's wager and were confidently declaring the mental deficiency of its proposer. Passepartout rose heavily and ascended to the observation deck where he was met to be met, where he was to meet said fool for coffee. Observation table, okay, so a deck, we know that one. That's up here, it's right here, by the coffee brewer. Phileas greeted his newly hired servant with a hot, hot mark and a list of errands, and then left hurriedly about his own business. As for enjoying the view, the idea never occurred to him, for he was the sort of Englishman who, in his travels, gets his servants to do the sightseeing for him. Then you're not doing sightseeing. Passepartout took the list and the coffee over to the deck's railing and gazed out over the city to the west, across the nearest bridge, beyond Beyond, he saw the Palais du Palais, Palais de Trocadero. I'm sorry, Trocadero. I don't know. The peculiar horseshoe-shaped museum constructed for a world fair. That's a horseshoe, apparently. I cannot see that from here. Mr. Passepartout, who had been away from Paris five years, was glad to behold his native city. However, fleetingly, as he finished the coffee, he glanced at the list first entry. He was to present himself at the helm of the stern wheel, passenger steamer on which Fogg had booked them passage to Italy. Hey, oh there, it is this one. Sacre bleu, the streamer was dry ducked with a broken cog in the stern wheel mechanism. Passepartout knew even a single day's delay would suffice to fatally break his master's itinerary. After entreating the airship's captain for a description of the fading part, he repaired at once to 
To the tower's metal scrapyard. On the western side. In hopes of saving the day. And you cannot see which way is north. But I think it was that, that way. North, that way. But the required part was nowhere to be found. Unluckily, Passepartout set about asking the other airships to depart ahead of schedule, knowing that Fogg would pay handsomely for such an unaccustomed request. Finally, in desperation, he approached the cabin of the humble coal barge. That's where we went before. Also, that clock there is the right time. That's the current time of me. So where would a little clock be on this shit there? Right at the helm. The captain of the coal barge agreed for a prize to take them to Brindisi, where they would find passage across the Mediterranean to Cairo and thence eastward through Zeus, or however you pronounce that. Passport 2 realized that to be of use to his master in this ambitious tour of the world, he would have to acquaint himself with the geographical route. He returned to the ticketing and baggage zone and touched each of four travel posters in the order Fog and Knee would visit this depicted destination, starting with Egypt and traveling east. North, south, east. Oh. So, first that one. Then Hong Kong and then last New York. Having familiarized himself with the tour's route and secured a circuitous second leg, I am not sure if I'm butchering all these words here. Uh, Passport 2 suddenly comprehended a bit of personal strategy. He realized he had left the gas burner dead in his room in London. And that over the course of 80 days, it would surely accumulate such an expense as to wreck him financially. He decided the best course would be to post a letter with his master's key enclosed to a cousin in the city who could turn it off. Passepartout made his way to the mail cabinet. Of course, the postage required would need to be paid in the local currency. Passepartout had noticed several piles of assorted loose coins around the aeroport. He hopped around like a beggar, taking a few French from each and leaving double the value in English pounds. He may be a servant to a fool, but he was nonetheless an honorable man. In this manner, he eventually gathered the required amount. We need to find all the money. There's also money in this one. You. That's not a little jar, but... Up there. Right on the table. <laughs> but the letter stamped and the ma and in the mail Passepartout dutifully returned to his master's list. Perhaps Fogg really was a fool. The remaining entries comprised a series of seemingly inconsequential instructions to be followed. Rather like a child's game, he had played once in Germany. Start at the bottom of the north elevator, read the first dot dot dot. Yeah, there's only one left. Now turn to the west and go up the stairs. 
From here you should see where the dancing lady is attached to the platform above. Climb to the platform. Passepartout Patu rolled his eyes and followed his eccentric master's bidding. Dancing lady. Hey. Seven steps south, south. Twenty-three steps east, fifteen steps north, and ascending. After a slight jog to the east, continue five more steps north. Turn west and walk fifteen steps, then search that. Uh, okay. Not dead. Behind the elevator. So north is that way. I don't know how I found it. I was just like me. Let's try. Very good, Mr. Passpato. Read a new note. I can see I have hired a meticulous and resourceful valet. Now join me on the very top deck and let us look to the journey before us. Oh. Right here at port 18. And this is the last one, guys. This is the new club. Pals Bateau climbed the spiral stairs to the tower's top and sat down beside Phileas. He would eventually tell his master about the unflattering headlines. The marooned steamer, the coal barge exhibition affair, and the gas burner. But for the time being, they sat and enjoyed the fireworks. Congratulations, you earned the International Traveler's Putter. It's a pretty putter. What is that at the end? I nearly tried to grab it. It's a nice putter, nice looking putter. I like that. Thank you for watching, guys, and thank you to the Mighty Coconut team for sponsoring me with a key for this map here. Around the world in 18 days, the last of the Jules Verne maps. If you would like a walkthrough of this map and the normal map, then go to my Twitch page on www.twitch.tv forward slash chrislexian. I will be streaming this course. And I will most likely throw a video on YouTube too. But if you want to see it live, then go there. Also, if you want to watch a guide to find all 18 balls, then click on this video here. But that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, have a good trip around the world in 18 days. Bye.